Hi everyone, uh, my name is Greg Burke and uh, Elizabeth and I are doing a presentation this week uh, for the Anion and Smith articles. Um, and what uh, these articles deal with is um, socioeconomic status, social class, and education all mixed together. Uh, these have been um, as you can see, like these articles are from 30 and 40 years ago, respectively. So this is not a new issue in education. And um, I'm going to give my take on all the information uh, that I, I came across in these articles. So um, basically what it boils down to is um, testing and... Um, the type of school that you go to based on where you live, whether it be in inner city, in a suburb, in rural, in a uh, private, uh, uh, wealthy, upper class um, institution, uh, they're all subject to, you know, testing and um, and the, uh, the consequences of these tests. Um, now, a lot of these studies uh, seem to concentrate on the, uh, the inner city poor schools where the majority of the student population is black, um, but I would just like to take a minute to remind everyone that, um, you know, there are other schools out there uh, in different parts that, um, that people seem to not remember um, and I guess I'm, I'm speaking of uh, like rural rural schools um, where the majority of the population is is predominantly white uh, and they have the exact same problems as the the inner city schools do they have a lack of funding they have um, not as many resources uh, they have a lack of you know, materials and, and technology. And um, I just wanted to bring to people's attention that, um, you know, these these schools are in this the same uh, situation and they have the exact same issues, albeit with a smaller number of students. So uh, we just might want to make sure that we, you know, when we're looking at things that it's not always you know about the poor inner city schools you know there's still the poor rural schools out there as well who who don't have um, or who aren't afforded the same opportunities um, but anyways back to uh, this week's uh, informative session um, so basically what the studies found is uh, was in my opinion pretty much um, I guess common sense. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't mind blowing new information. Um, basically, the results of the studies were that the poor inner city schools perform worse on testing than do the um, the what they call the um, the elite uh, schools. Uh, the elite white schools um, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me what they found was that um, most of the time like I just mentioned um, you know the the poor inner city and rural schools uh, they don't have the same opportunities they don't have the same um, resources, uh, they don't have uh, the same materials, uh, nor do they have the same um, teachers as the, uh, the privileged schools. And uh, uh, so with, with that being said though, um, <clears throat> there are some points that I would like to bring up. Um, these studies also focused on the students and, <clears throat> excuse me, and how, uh, what type of students um, that they were and what they what they came up with was that um, you know as you go 
higher through the uh, the, the quote unquote social classes, um, the the opinions expressed and the knowledge uh, of the students differed um, greatly based on what type of uh, school that you went to. Um, but they were all relative to their own environment from poor to middle class to um, to working class to the elite uh, the standards and expectations um, varied greatly as well uh, the lower income schools were less focused um, less driven where the the upper um, elite schools uh, the students were more um, self-reliant, uh, they had more self-motivation, they focused more, um, and they really went after what, um, what they wanted. Uh, in, in addition to that, um, you know, the, the teachers did play uh, an, an important role. Um, I noticed that the, uh, in all cases, um, whatever standards the teacher set and students they all um, they all lived up to them none of them ever exceeded them except for you know in, in very few um, exceptions in the uh, the poorer schools um, the the biggest thing was um, resistance and the the students were you know they're more disruptive they're less focused like I said and um, they generally weren't interested or motivated to do any learning but at the same time neither were the teachers um, and you can say that they are you know somewhat a, a product of their environment um, when you come from you know some of the poor neighborhoods where you know people don't make a whole lot of money they're really not they don't have a good example to go off of um, how to work hard to you know to, to get what you want um, in the uh, the middle class schools uh, their their attitude was more of uh, possibility maybe we have a chance to do something you know we're not we're not poor but we're not rich you know we're not at the bottom but we're not at the top so we can we can really go either way and um, you know the the teachers are kind of the the same they really need to um, you know they didn't really raise the bar for the students to to go after um, but at the same time the students didn't raise it themselves they kind of just went with the flow um, as opposed to the um, the upper class or elite class schools um, their their modus operandi was uh, excellence that you know you you can be nothing but excellent um, and these were you know all the students their their parents were um, you know doctors and lawyers and surgeons and CEOs and presidents of companies so that's what they that's what they grew up in that's what they're expected to be um, and that's what their goal for achievement was uh, and you know once again most of them are are going to um, are going to be one of those things and like I said before it's you know everyone is a, a product of their uh, environment you know not everyone can be a CEO that's you know I I'm not you know I'm going to school to be a teacher I work construction um, you know my parents were both uh, lower middle class working you know white working people um, I'm, I'm kind of the same way I you know I, I did pretty well for myself but you know I was you know like to think of myself as is the exception where I had the the self-driving determination and and focus to want to do better and to not settle for anything less than the best um, so, so with everyone being more or less um, a, a product of their you know, environment, how, do, how does that affect the, the testing, especially today with the, uh, the common core standards um, that 
that we're coming across now in education. Um, what, the, what the studies uh, that we read by Smith and Rottenberg found um, that uh, it's not, not very positive. Um, you know, the, the testing has taken a, a uh, has a negative impact on classroom and education and what they're going for. Um, there's less time for ordinary instruction. Uh, you know, it affects what's being taught. Teachers are now, instead of teaching what they should be, they're teaching to the test. Um, schools are, are mandating that teachers only um, use techniques and practice for things that are on the test. You know, they use old tests for examples. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, it, it negatively affects, you know, the teachers as well because they, they you know, they feel stuck uh, that they can't do what they should be doing or what they want to be doing. That they're um, they're forced to, you know, stick to these guidelines in order for, um, you know, the school to uh, not have any negative co consequences from the... Um, poor results uh you know and it it also has you know consequences such as you know the, the better the results teachers get promotions they get fired um schools can get closed they can get taken over there's you know all kinds of uh things that are going on with this stuff today um but i i guess uh <clears throat> i'm running a little long for my time here but what i'm going to say in closing is that um, when it all boils down to it, regardless of what everyone is teaching, what you know the curriculum is or what the testing is, how much you make, where you come from, what your parents, friends, family did, um, in the end, it it's up to you. You know, no one is responsible for anything except you. You are the one that has to be driven and determined and self motivated to do what you need to do to be successful in life. Um, you know, you can't blame anyone but yourself for losing or failing at something. Uh, it's not anyone's responsibility but your own to, you know, move forward in life. Um, so even though you might not be from the best area or might have access to the best education, um, that's still no excuse, in my opinion, for, to not work hard and to not find a way to do it. Um, and there's a couple other studies out there that I need to mention since I am also in the, uh, I forgot the 514 section of this class. Uh, but there's um, another study uh, from the Oxford Review of Education. Uh, so the same problems that I, I, I said were, you know, here in America, um, it, it's it's a worldwide worldwide problem, excuse me. Um, they talk about the uh, the exact same problems with social class uh, differences in school and uh, education even over in England and I posted that on the Dropbox uh, for y'all and um, oh one other good point uh, this other article that I had uh, it was it's called the experience of low social socioeconomic status students in higher education uh, and what this did is, along with um, a couple other programs that are uh, actually out there, um, what they do is they take uh, students from uh, uh, poor inner city schools and they place them in the elite uh, um, in the uh, the affluent schools, uh, the affluent private uh, boarding schools, and uh, they found that um, after uh, a period of uh, some adjustment um, being it's kind of like being thrown into a new um, a new world. So after a brief uh, psychological adjustment to in uh, you know the the culture shock, um, they found that students from um, lower uh, socioeconomic status. Um, Still didn't perform as well in in most cases as the um, the affluent students. Um, most of them re, uh, reverted back to their um, 
the way of how they were back in their own um, neighborhood or, or wherever uh, they were from. Uh, there were a few, as always, there's always a few exceptions to the rule um, of students who, you know, once they're thrust into this situation, they excelled and exceeded um, the students. But uh, for, for the most part, um, <clears throat> you know, it's those were the ones that wanted to do something with their life and, and you know, get out of the, the, the neighborhood or the area um, that they were in. Um, but I also posted that article for you to uh, browse on the Dropbox website. So um, that is all the time that I have for tonight, and uh, that's basically it in a nutshell. So thanks for listening, and I uh, look forward to hearing from you all.